The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you govern all things both in heaven and on earth. Mercifully hear the supplications of your people, and in our time grant us your peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. In the synagogue at Nazareth, Jesus read from the book of the prophet Isaiah and began to say, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, Is not this Joseph's son? He said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, Doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, Do hear also in your hometown the things that we have heard you did at Capernaum. And he said, Truly, I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, and there was a severe famine over all the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them except to a widow at Zarephath in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the cliff on which their town was built, so that they might hurl him off the cliff. But he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. The Gospel of the Lord. The town of Nazareth is indeed built on a high ground. Whether there was a cliff there that the people would have thrown Jesus off of, I don't really know. But I do know that in comparison to Capernaum, which is at sea level, Nazareth is a very elevated place in the north of Israel. This passage from Luke has a slightly different feel in Matthew, where it also appears. In Luke's passage, we have Jesus having read from the scroll of Isaiah and announced to the assembled members in the synagogue that the words of Isaiah's scriptural prophecy have been fulfilled in their presence, meaning that Jesus has come into their midst as the incarnation, the Messiah, who will save Israel and redeem Israel's people in the eyes of God. Now, the reaction that the people have under these circumstances initially is, isn't that cute? This is Joseph's son, the humble carpenter, and he can explicate scripture as well as any well-trained rabbi or scribe. Then Jesus, sensing that there's an air of condescension, perhaps, in the midst of the folks in the synagogue, says, doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, doctor, cure yourself. Now, we're not exactly sure what this means, but it has the sense that one should repair oneself before going around and telling other people what to do. In this, we have the sense that maybe the people didn't see Jesus quite the same way Jesus saw himself at the time. And so Jesus went on to say, I don't really expect you to treat me the way you would treat 
um, a prophet coming from someplace else because no prophet is honored in their hometown. In Matthew's rendering of this passage, there is actually this sense that Jesus's family is embarrassed by how forthright he is being in the synagogue and the suggestion that perhaps he's gone a little mad and that maybe he needs to be kind of taken away and dealt with. We don't get that sense really in Luke's passage. We get the sense of a fully empowered individual speaking truth to power in his hometown. This has got to be a very hard thing to do. If you've ever spent any time in your hometown and a small town where everybody knows you, like Oxford, perhaps it's harder for you to gain credibility in the midst of all of that. Well, this is the situation that Jesus faced himself. And so he goes further, he takes it a little bit further, and he talks about how in, um, in Elijah's time, there was this famine. And while there were many, many, many widows who were going hungry and thirsty, who he could have been sent to, he wasn't sent to all of them. He was only sent to the widow in, in Sidon. Similarly, out of the writings uh, and the stories of Elijah, we have the same idea that there were many, many, many lip lepers that Elijah could have cured, but in fact, he wound up curing Naaman, who was not even one of the people of Israel. And so this enraged the listeners in the synagogue in Nazareth, where Jesus was speaking to them. And in their anger, they in fact fulfilled the very words that Jesus spoke to him, that he as a prophet speaking truth to their power would not be accepted in their presence. And so we have this final scene in the high mountain town of Nazareth, where the people drive him to a proverbial cliff. And Jesus, presumably with his back to the cliff, being ready to be pushed off into oblivion, basically says, without saying anything, no, I'm out of here. I'm walking right through the midst of you. And they, and they part and he passes and he goes about the rest of his ministry. So when you think about this passage from Luke, think about the power that Jesus must have felt within him and the power that he displays to us and this is not the power of domination. This is the power of self-control, of self-possession, and of feeling the power of God in him to go and do the work that God has given him to do. It's a sign to us that we too should feel the power in us and go out and do the work that God has given us to do. Amen.